Welcome to the Steelers Realm Podcast. Here are the boys of Steelers Realm. Hey, what's going on, Steeler Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Steelers Realm Podcast. Hey, good to be back in the driver's seat again, guys. Hope everyone's having a great week so far. Uh, we got uh, normal cast of characters back again this week. Uh, back from a little bit of a hiatus, it's the famous TA back in the saddle. Uh, God knows where that saddle resides, but uh, what's that, going on, brother? That saddle's That's getting good. saddle sores, JT. That's what it <laughs> is. I know what those cowboys felt like way back in the day. I don't think I could have made a Conestoga ride. Okay, well, where are you at tonight? I am in a little town way, 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 way up in the northeast corner of Pennsylvania, just outside of Scranton. Oh, say hello to the Biden family while you're over there. Well, I did happen to go down his highway today, and it's just as rough as he is. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, good to have you back, man. Also joining us on the other end, too. It's a freight train. What's going on, brother? How you doing, man? Hey, JT. Hey, TA. Hope you boys had a stupendous Father's Day. And the same to you, Steelers Nation. Uh, I'm glad to be back. Let's talk some football. Wait, 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 wait. Since I've been away, did you pick up a dictionary? Stupendous? <laughs> Was that the $5 word of the night? Dude, I'm like a thesaurus, man. I got all kinds of big words to roll out. I might even whip out a couple more by the end of this podcast. <laughs> Just you wait and see, T.A. Yes, yeah, stay tuned, <laughs> Steelers Nation. This ought to get interesting. What's he got in his back pocket? Who knows? <laughs> I do know there's a whole bunch of stuff to talk about, though, too. You know, each week we're like, man, what are we going to talk about this week? What are we going to talk about this week? Well, it just keeps coming, guys. And uh, good, good stuff keeps coming, too. Although some sadness, you know, we might touch on some of that. We lost a few uh, this week, a few warriors this week, but uh, good stuff up ahead, including our new segment, Jag Off of the Week. Uh, T.A. with his uh, weekly Manscaped story we missed last week, buddy. Uh, and I think the week before, as a matter of fact, too. Also, uh, uh, Larry managed to shove his way back into Pittsburgh making the AFC North uh, uh, tour and uh, our normal segment camp competition this week. We're going to dig into the defensive line and, um, you know, see how that is with uh, obviously with the signing of Larry Ogan Uh and then our history forged in steel segment by the freight train. It's got some new items for us. And we're also going to talk about Tomlin's latest interview uh, as well as some other stuff outside the realm including our weekly debacle, uh, the Sean Watson, et cetera, et cetera. So good show lined up, guys. I'm pretty excited to dig into it. How about you guys? Let's rock and roll. Let's do, do it. it. Going. Yeah. So Freight Train, why don't you, uh, who, do, who do we have for the jag off of the week? I know who I was thinking about. but Did you guys happen to see what Chase Claypool said? Self-proclaiming himself as the third best wide receiver in the league. Jag off. Now, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Just because the man's got confidence, we're going to call him a jag off? Who's jag to say off. he's not the third best wide receiver in the league? <laughs> According to what statistic? <laughs> well. In his own mind. Hey, that's how legends are born. All legends are born in their own mind. And if that's the confidence he's going to bring to the team this year, I'm all for it. I'm just wondering who's going to throw him the ball to make him that third greatest wide receiver this year. <laughs> well, listen, you want to be considered the third best wide receiver in the league going into your third year. You haven't made a Pro Bowl yet. You haven't been an All-Pro. You haven't had a 1,000-yard receiving season yet. 
there's nothing that you have shown chase to con to convince us other than your choice of self-proclaiming asian that you are the third best wide receiver in the league there's okay. another one to me well did no, you catch no. that did i, I did now hold, hold on now hold on first of all i'm gonna give him the best hairdo for wide receivers in the league the man's got some locks there so i'm gonna give him the best hair Second, I'm going to give him at least the third best wide receiver on this team. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. And third of all, just because the man hasn't made a 1,000 yards, I mean, look, his rookie year, he made damn near made 900 by having two jokers called Duck and Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, throw to him. Now, okay. we all bad-mouthed Ben last year because he couldn't throw. Now he got Mitch the bitch, or he got Kenny to pick it. I mean, he might be able to hit 2,000 yards. Where's the positive thinking on this? Sure, sure. Well, let's take a look back, uh -oh, shall we? We're just going back. Uh, I'm, I'm not even going to throw numbers out. We're just going to put ranks out there, okay? So top three, last year, uh, he was tied for 53rd in receptions, 35th in yardage. Uh, he tied for 91st in number of touchdowns. So these were receivers among the league, okay, active receivers. And his, uh, okay, we'll say 14.6 yards per catch ranked 20th. So that was his best uh, high water mark was his average per catch. So, I'm sorry, did you uh, say 20th or did you say third? Uh, 20th. Okay. I just wanted to clarify zero, that. Two zero, two zero. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Big, big goals. I, I can appreciate that. I respect that. Um, let's see it. Yeah. I'm all about him having some confidence going into the season and some self motivation. Okay. But until you show it on the field, keep it to yourself, man. Let your numbers do the talking. Go to work. Show us that you are the third best wide receiver in the league. Don't talk about it. Be about it. All right. Let's talk so, about it. So here, here, here's the here's the deal. Story kind of reminds me of back in my youth. You know, you had the old Bic razor. You know, you didn't have the confidence needed. You know, and you kind of hid that self when you were trying to clean yourself up. Because back in those days, you know, Harry was good. Now, if you look at Chase... He might have been that hairy guy last year. But you know what? I bet you he's got himself. I bet you he picked himself up a performance package 4.0 from Manscaped, buddy. You know why I know that? Because he's got confidence. He's self-proclaimed. He's got a smooth nut sack, and he's ready to run faster and quicker than anybody else out there on the field right now. You know why? Because he's using the precision engineered tools for his family jewels. And that's just exactly what Manscaped will do for you too, Steelers Nation. It will give you the confidence to go ahead and go out there and be a legend in your own mind. So Chase, hats off to you for utilizing Realm 20 and Steelers Nation. Join the club. You too might be the number three wide receiver on this team. What's that code? That is Realm 20. And that'll get them what? That is going to get them 20% off. There it is, right there. 20% 20 off. off. Nice. Free shipping, too. Bud. Realm Free 20. Shipping. That's even to Canada, because we know where Mapletron's from. <laughs> That's right. Since, um, hey, it was a perfect Father's Day. can be still be a belated Father's Day gift, too. No doubt. Exactly. So, get that so. confidence needed. That's it. Clean it up, man. And while you're at it, shave that, that hairdo, too, so the helmet fits better. <laughs> they had extra helmets. We're going to see those in training camp, speaking of helmets. We might be. getting off track here, I know. Sorry. I See? Sidetracked. It wasn't hard. <laughs> I, they segued, call this? I segued into a perfect little skit right there. Keep the show rolling. <laughs> Derailing us already. That's He'll go. be the first to yell at us at the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. All right. He will. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this week's Jag Off of the Week, Chase Claypool. 
All in favor? Aye. Nay. Jack. Aye. Off. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's keep it rolling, man. Hey, we got a new player in town. Larry. I, 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 How do you I, say I, his I, last I, name, T.A.? Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> I was waiting all day to see how how uh is he our only hope? <laughs> Look, I sure as, as hell hope not. As yeah. long as the force is with him, that's all that matters. <laughs> You're my only hope. Be <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what's the scoop, man? That's kind of crazy. So I was following this a little bit, saw that it was coming to town, and we're like, okay. Started as a brown, right? And then say uh, as a Bengal. And of course, uh, Mason Rudolph. <laughs> That'll be interesting, Camp, too. We'll get into that, too, a little bit. Hey, and is there um, an over and under on that, by the way? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm pulling for Mason, though. It's just drop him. You stick know, his like, hand. How about like this? Rocky comeback? Yeah, yeah. Just stick his hand out. Hey, welcome to the team. Just uh, boom. Just drop him. How about That's better yet? Okay. How, Welcome. How about if on the first day of camp he pulls a Paul Cruz from the longest yard? Just let this offensive line open up. Let Ob One Kenobi come right through and just wham. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking Does about Mason have the ability to do that. <laughs> well, I can tell you this: he's <laughs> yeah. horrible at short passes because he has no <laughs> touch. And right. he drills him in there. So I'm pretty confident he's going to be able to do it. Whether or not it's an exact bullseye is left to be seen. But drilling it in there short distance, no problem. I was thinking of the longest yard where the referees keep calling all these penalties on them. And so you remember what he did to correct that issue. Pass to the groin like three times in a row. <laughs> and the guy's like, you're going to call it right? Yeah. So there you go. That would work. That would that's work too. I'm, that's what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. And Little then brass. Obi-Wan Last Kenobi. The Obi-Wan Kenobi will wish he would have listened to the show and got him a manscape because if his family jewels were protected, that had a slid right off there. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. So, so um, go ahead, Freight Train. What we can say? I think I know what you're. Well, I was just, to. I was just gonna, you know, take control here with the steam train <laughs> that I am here and keep the show rolling <laughs> down the tracks here. Does, <laughs> Why do you think we hired him, folks? <laughs> <laughs> he is. Does, o- does Oak and Joby come in as the incumbent starter? Good question. I, well, first of all, I, I, you know, all seriousness aside. You know, it's only a one-year deal. And let's face it, we only got him because he didn't pass the physical in Chicago. He had the foot injury last year. Doesn't look like it might not be 100% healed. So to say he's the incumbent starter at this time, I think Camp's going to tell that. Right now, though, I'm not giving it to him. But I do like the addition, especially if we can get about eight games out of him, because that's about eight more games we got out of him than we did to it last year. Yeah. Well, I mean, last year he put in 16 games, had seven sacks, 49 tackles, and 16 quarterback hits playing defensive tackle. Okay, now he moves out uh, apparently to the outside is is what I'm guessing we signed him for, unless him and Alulu are going to bulldog fight it out in camp. Um, yeah, but I don't so know. he he hasn't he hasn't really been bitten by an injury bug he, he stayed on the field so I, I just i i think this is this is a low re- risk high reward signing so i uh, i think right. he has a very good shot to be the starter well yeah. then let's then i'll tell you what let's just go ahead and let's dig in the camp competition here and let's talk about the defensive line. Let's talk this out like normal human beings just to see if Obi-Wan Kenobi has a fit here. So we're talking the defensive line. We already know there's one guy and one guy only who's going to be starting next year, or I'm just not next year, I mean this year, and that's Chris Wormley, right? Oh, no, no that's Cam right. Hayward. Ever, 
Oh, Cam Hayward. I forgot about him. He's like the co-captain <laughs> of the co-captain, right? Yeah, he's pretty important. No big deal, though. Right. He's a Herschel Walker Award winner or Gail Sayers or Walter Payton man of the something, whatever. That guy, you know who I'm talking about, right? All right. So he's got he's got the show. So who do we got after that? Who, who who's who's in that lineup? Well, you got well now Ogan Joby. You got Loudermill. You got Liel. You got your favorite, the Frenchman. You got Le Glue. No, not no, Le not the goo. Yes. Henry. You got the you got the twins. We got the twins. You got Mon yeah. your boy Monstr Montravius. Ooh, Montravius. That's right, TA. Yeah, and who else now? We got two more out there. Well, Wormley, you already said him. And we got a Lulu. Uh-huh. Let's not forget hey, about Donovan Jeter. Yes, but I uh, think that's the practice on. squad here. But Well, hold on. He's still got a chance in camp, right? And then you got old Archibong. Oh, Daniel Archibong. Ah, sahi, ha, ho, ho, ha. <laughs> right? All right. Yeah. So now, so now let's look at this. So how many how many people do we think the Steelers are actually going to take into the season? How many defensive linemen do you think we're going to go ahead and slate for? Six? Seven? At least six. At least six. JT, what do you think? Yeah. Say that too. Six? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with seven. And the only reason I'm saying they're going to go with seven is because of what happened to us last year, and we were we were struggling to find players on that. Now, can we all agree that they're going to rotate? It really doesn't matter if you're listed as a defensive end, defensive tackle, nose tackle. That's just just a an acronym that we're going to put behind your name for NFL purposes. But you're going to play whatever we tell you to play. Yeah, I would say so because majority of the those guys are in their mid to upper thirties, so you can sprinkle in those younger guys. Well, we've only got three that's in their upper third, or two of them that's in their th two of them three. That's in their upper thirty. So half of what we're taking in, or so who, who's the third? Tyson and Cam are in their third. Tyson, 30. yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm drawing a blank here. I know there's one more. Wormley, isn't he? No. Isn't Wormley in his 30s? In his 30s? No, he's 28. Yep, 28. he's 28. Okay. So we only got two old guys. Okay. The rest yeah. of them but are But a lot of uncertainty. 30. Okay. All right. So, okay. So two-thirds, what we're saying right now. All right. So going into camp, we you know we're not going to cut DeMarvin Leal. Because we're not going to waste a third round pick Got unless it. he comes up and gets lame, right? Right. Did you guys mention Archie Bong? Yeah, Archie we did. Bong. Okay. Archie Bong. Archie Bong. Bong. Archie Bong. Yes. <laughs> Daniel son. Daniel son. Daniel son. Now, here's <laughs> my whole thing. Where up. does Louder Milk? I like the way that kid come on last year as a rookie, and we all know as the Tomlinism goes, you know. It's that second year jump into the NFL that we really want to see improvement. So, Louder Mix has already been been working out with the Watt boys. So, I'm almost wondering if he doesn't get the starting nod. Well, and if you've been listening to the Steelers realm like you should have been, that's been my pick all along. I think Louder Milk came on last year and, and has proven in the offseason that he's been working really hard um to earn that spot at the end to take over for Stefan to it. So that's my starter on the end. That that's my dark horse pick. Well, and I'm I'm gonna tell you if Montravius Adams can continue to do what he did last year and not just be a, a one hit wonder because let's face it up until last year he'd come in with the Steelers, he really didn't have too stellar of a career. But I like him in first and second down situation as our true nose tackle. Yeah. Because who does he remind you of, JT? Who? Montravius Adams. Uh -oh. I don't know. 
do, do, do. Who played <laughs> nose? Who played nose tackle for us? You talking about the grave digger? Well, or snacks. Jar- my man snacks. I'm thinking my man snacks. Yeah, because Montrevious can eat up some defensive players, man. I mean, he was taking on double teams last year like it was nothing. So I'm I'm kind of liking where he's sitting at. So okay, so we're all in agreement. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, right there. So now who's the seventh going to be? Because that leaves our fourth year, or uh, our what do you, what do I want to say? Our giving up our fourth round draft pick for Chris Wormley, and then that leaves us with the Twins, the Davis boys, and then. Does that mean we lose Mondu and then we keep Archibong and Jeter as practice squad? Yeah, that's how I think it's going to roll out. I, I think you keep Wormley around just because he's, you know, a yeah. veteran and he, he, you know, he can play multiple positions on that line. He can slide in. I don't think the Davis boys are going to make it. You know, I don't, I don't see where they fit into this. The, the, I really think that Donovan Jeter could maybe possibly make the team depending on what camp does because he is a big body. So it'll be interesting to see what he does in camp to prove that he belongs here. Hmm. So you're saying the French guy won't make the practice squad? <clears throat> no. Because I think I, I think. All those who's left out, Mondu's got the most experience out of all of them on this defense. Mm. Yeah, but there's nothing there's nothing desirable about him that, that we've seen on the field. <laughs> there's nothing desirable there. He no, just, I, I, look, I'm not going to argue that. But he is always around the ball. I'll give him that. True. He true. is around the ball. So was I mean, for me, players, that what you want? Yeah, I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw a little twist here. Devil's Uh-oh. advocate. Was he was he <clears throat> really that good or was the bar set pretty low? Wow. Well, last year I'm gonna say the bar was set pretty low. Bar was low, no doubt. Mm-hmm. So but hey, but, you know what? On a positive note. That's where players have an opportunity to shine, right? That's how they get starting jobs. When you got that opportunity, regardless of how high that bar is set, you, you know you got to come in. When you get that shot, man, you got to you got to deliver. Next man up. Earn but, your spot. And here's the other thing that we haven't even talked about. One of those cats are going to have to make it on special teams. So. Mondu's already got special teams qualification. Wormley's got special teams qualification. If it wasn't for Carlos Davis getting injured last year, he might have actually had shown some promise and hope. Well, you know Leo's going to be on special teams. Yeah, yeah, and I don't, so, I don't think you're going to see Wormley on special teams. No, I think Leo will be on the special teams. Now, I want to move into this part. Do you think with the addition of Ogan Joby and what we've done with this line, what we have, did we shore up our run defense? Do you think we've done enough so far that it it has to be better than what we what we went through last year? Do you think we've done enough? Uh well, we spent enough. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> right? Yes. We Certainly did spend enough. Did we get what we paid for? Well, here, here's the thing. I, I think if if we look at, at that, first of all, we don't know how Alu Alu is going to look coming off of his injury and at 35 years old. Is he still the player that we we remember? That's a big question. Also, let's make no mistake here, guys. I mean, I, I don't want to be negative Nelly here, but Cam's another year older. Does it mean he gets another year better? I mean, because he's talking about wanting to play till he's 40. So you know he's kind of taking care of himself. But we definitely need some youth and a little bit more speed. And that's where Loudermilk comes in and hopefully one day Leal, because you're not really going to get that from Adams. 
and then Obi Wan, oh, yeah, Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> I mean, you know, he he was a terror against us, all for both the uh, the Browns and on mm. on Cincinnati. The mm-hmm. question is, is is that foot going to be able to give him what he needs to take that first step off the line? He's a great technique guy, and he's he's a stout body up front, knows how to position himself and plug holes. I think so. I think Steelers did an excellent job filling in. I, I can only think of two pieces in the offseason that they have not addressed yet, and I think one is only a matter of time before it gets done, and the other is running back. So... But other than that, yeah, to answer your long-winded version of your question, uh, absolutely think they did enough. Right. JT, was there another signing that we need to talk about on the offensive side of the ball? Did Kenny pick it? <laughs> yeah. Well, come on. <laughs> like, number one topic of the week. So, we got another quarterback? We got another quarterback. That's the same one. The well, same one we drafted. Oh, oh, yeah. Officially now. He is Signed officially papers. ours. Signs your papers. Yeah. Four years with a fifth year option. $14 million with a $7.4 million signing bonus. And here's the kicker. He's the taking whole eight. He can afford it. Where do you want to go? Ruth Christie's. Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, here's the biggest news of the whole kit and caboodle. It's fully guaranteed this contract. Jeez. Yeah. So he's going to get paid whether or not he ever plays, stays, or leaves unwillingly. But, you know, we, we can't blame Pickett. We can't congratulate his – we can't congratulate his agent either. I mean, that's part of the bargaining agreement because everybody, 1 through 30, has a guaranteed contract this year. Yeah. It's slowly moving into the name of the game of the NFL. His players want to be fully guaranteed now. There's not really well, yeah, much of this. They want their money. They want to get paid, man. Yeah. There's no jumbling around numbers here and there. It's I want my money and I need it now. I want all of it. So I just think it's interesting that that it's moving into rookies that haven't even proven themselves yet are getting these fully guaranteed contracts. Yeah, but that's kind of always sort of been there. Now 31 of them get it because let's face it. Look at Ryan Leaf. Thank goodness Ryan Leaf got paid. Look at uh, Jam- uh, Jamarcus Russell. Thank goodness he got paid. Now, granted, they didn't do much on the football field, but they got to live the high life. They got paid. They got paid. They that got- they did. I mean, so so we, we, when you look at it, yeah, I think that the NFL players would like to be more like the NBA and MLB. But at the end of the day, I think this is still a product of 17 games. And at the end of the day, you got your first five years in this league to try to make as much as you can. And you're already stymied because you're on a four year contract with a fifth year option. So hoping to get to that next payday. So, you know, 14 million guaranteed over four years. It really ain't that much money when you think about it. No, no, especially at the quarterback position. Yeah. And look, if we go to the Super Bowl in the third year and he becomes the MVP, man, we'll have the cheapest quarterback ever to win the Super Bowl at $1.25 million for the year. That's yeah, a part no, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah. But the thing that I thought was interesting, guys, is with everything we've done this year, we now have the highest paid defense and the second to lowest paid offense what do you guys think of that are we Mm. back to the steel curtain days that's pretty cool i i 
Well, and it and it goes without saying, when you're hitting on these these guys, you got to pay them to keep them in town. I mean, it's not like you're paying any Joe Schmo these big money dollars. Okay, you're paying all pro players to keep them in town for this defense. It's gonna get expensive. Yeah, but when you look at it, there's three players that take up that payroll on defense in TJ, Minka, and Cam. Three out and of three out of eleven. Yeah, but those are also very important positions. They are important positions. And and let's face it, they bring us a lot of enjoyment on Sunday. But I'd like to see a few more all pros out there to help us out, especially in the middle of that line that we're going to break down or not the middle of the line, middle of that uh, that defense that will break down in weeks to come. Well, JT was telling me before the show, he really thinks Terrell Edmonds is going to ball out this year. Whoa, <laughs> so. whoa, 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 whoa. Is this a news flash? Breaking news? JT <laughs> now loves Terrell Edmonds? Read all about it? Extra, extra. Yeah, no, Tell no, me no, the no, story, no, JT. No. I missed it. Settle down, settle down, settle down. <laughs> well and the thing uh, is you know what i hope so i hope so guys you know what's calling for him they kind of like move him down into more of a uh, more hybrid like slash safety slash linebacker role but i played well last year so i'm okay with it i'm okay with it i wish him well this year too i don't agree with the signing but I wish him well and i hope he delivers man and for all of you who did not know that miracles really, truly do happen, you're witnessing one right here now. JT, you're growing up so quick on us. <laughs> We're not turning the page on Edmonds. <laughs> you have. Uh, for now, we'll see <laughs> if the season is, hasn't even started yet. So, <laughs> Well, uh, here's the thing. Okay. He's pro right now. He's, he's batting 100 right now. So. <laughs> I think this defense, and, and you forgot to throw in uh, Miles Jack. I think Miles Jack is a big oh, cog wait for this a defense. Stop. Why are you giving up extra, extra air time here? We got to break that down next time for the linebackers. I'm just talking about how expensive the defense is to you. I'm not moving into a positional group. All right. I'm all right. finishing my point. Yeah, but he didn't make that much money. Let me finish my point. All right, finish your point. <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Steelers Nation. I'm a little wound up tonight. I'm, I'm, go ahead. So we have. Right, you're done. <laughs> I'll make it short and sweet. <laughs> so we have enough Cowboys on this defense. Okay. We just need the rest of it to fall in line. Okay. You need you need those role players to do essentially their job. And if you think about it, Miles Jack was a pro bowler in Jacksonville, just had kind of a bad couple seasons there. Jacksonville's a mess. Okay. He comes in here with a different situation with uh, you know, Mike Tomlin and Brian Flores. He is a role player that those three main guys need to help succeed. I'm done. Is that okay to you? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You're making me nervous. Okay, quit it. <laughs> Don't Moving on. Nervous. We're all friends around here, buddy. <laughs> hey, hey, before we do, guys, check out down below. Uh, we've been nominated for best podcast in the best of Pittsburgh uh, 2022 voting this year. So far, we got nominated last year, didn't quite make it to the voting. We need your help, guys. Go out to uh, the city paper best of 2022 competition. Go down under people and places and uh, look up best podcast. Please nominate us and you can do it every day and every day and every day. Please do that and share. And uh, we'd like to, would like to make it into the voting stage this year. A lot of stiff competition out there, but uh, I don't know if you like what you hear, man, give us a thumbs up and help us out, man. How about it? Very well said JT. 
Now get you out there and vote, vote Steelers right. Nation. You guys vote today? Absolutely not. As soon as I get off here. I know you will. <laughs> yes. See Steeler Nation? Just got to slap them around a little bit. They'll, they'll, they'll crack, fall right in line. Cracking the whip. <laughs> That's it. All right. So what's going on? Is it time? It's time. Cue the music. And now it's time for Steelers Realms History Forged in Steel. All right, Steelers Nation. July 8th, 1933. What a great year that was. The franchise known as the Pittsburgh Pirates was founded by Art Rooney Sr. And later in 1940 was named the Steelers. Great year. Do you know why that was? So seven years they went. Seven Does it have something years. to do with the with the baseball team? Because back right. in the it is because back in the day, all NFL franchises named their teams after the baseball teams. It wasn't until oh. later that they started to change. Hence, the Arizona Cardinals, which most people don't know, was the Cleveland Cardinals at one time. Uh -huh. And then the St. Louis Cardinals. But go ahead, continue. Yeah. So in that same year, in September, on September the 20th, the first game in franchise history in Forbes Field ended in a 23-2 loss for the good guys. Now, I got a little fun fact for you, T.A. <laughs> 1933. In April, the prohibition had ended. You could buy a pint of beer for 10 cents, brother. So we went out. Gasoline was 18 cents a gallon. Whoa. You could spend 18 cents, get to the game, and then pay 10 cents afterwards to drink your sorrows away. <laughs> 28 cents later, so you're feeling like a million bucks. <laughs> That's it. Wow. What do you think about that, T.A.? Ten cent beer night. Well, you know, quick story. Back when I was, you know, nicking my nutsack. Now, it's time it, for Steelers Realms history forged in steel. There you go. <laughs> well, first of all, I, I have to make a correction on that. It was the Cleveland Rams, not the Cleveland Cardinals. I, I, uh -huh. I apologize. I apologize for that. Uh, but it used to be for the longest time back in the day during three two beer. I don't think you remember this freight train. It was 25 cent draft night. And man, when you were 16 years old, five bucks went a long way. Oh, I'm sure. Five bucks hardly gets you anything now. Might get me a monster mug. It ain't even getting you a beer at the bar. <laughs> hardly gets me in the door. <laughs> so you got, you got any other dates? I got one more. August 25th, 2001. The first game at Heinz Field was played. A 20 to 7 victory over the Detroit Lions in the preseason. So we opened the ketchup bottle with a win. Ah, there you go. Over the Lions. Hey, and, and speaking of which, since we're talking forged in history. It's kind of gone quiet whether or not Heinz will still be our sponsor next year, hasn't it? That's right. Yeah. Man, there's a lot of talk about that. That a contract was up for renewal. Um, I don't expect anything different to you guys. No, I'm thinking the Roonies will go ahead and work something out. I mean, let's face it. I mean, at 57 mil, when they did sign them back in 2001, that was even a bargain compared to the other 31 teams out there and what they're getting for sponsorship. So, yeah, yeah I, I look for them to try to work out another hometown deal with Heinz Field. Besides, I can't imagine it's cheap to replace those ketchup bottles. <clears throat> no. Those suckers look heavy. They have yeah. how many how many tons of ketchup do you think are in them things? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They keep spilling it all over the scoreboard. <laughs> Dumping it out, man. That's the more they score, the more ketchup they use. <laughs> so they're getting lighter by the day. Yes. All right. 
so, <laughs> let's get this out of the way, can we? Before we get into the Tomlin presser or his latest interview, I should say. Um, let's step outside the realm for a second, guys, if you don't mind, um, and touch on uh, a couple things. Let's get the sad notes out of the way. Former Pitt and Baltimore Raven player Tony Saragusa passed away at the age of 55. Jeez. R.I.P. Goose. Absolutely. Uh, I tell you what, that guy was just, you know, even even though you hated to play against him, his just there was just something about his character that you just had to love. I mean, he was just a great guy. He was great for pit football. He was good at the Colts. And let's face it, he went to the Ravens and won them the Super Bowl. And all the time, he never once got that macho-ness out of him, like, my shit don't stink. He was just a good overall player. And it's sad to see him go at a young age of 55. Yeah. And he was he was a fun guy, man. He had, he, he, he always had fun. He was into it. He was he, he always kept it light and humorous. Uh yeah. Uh, very genuine guy, larger than yeah. life personality. Uh, well said. Mm -hmm. Well said. Ravens also uh lost another at the age twenty six, Jalen Ferguson passed away. So running back. Peace. God bless. Yeah. No yeah, no news on him yet. That. Right on, on what they passed away from. Right. Well, right. Tony, Tony, I'm afraid it was probably a massive heart attack. I mean, let's face it. Tony wasn't the best in shape football player for a guy his size. No. I hadn't really seen him in his later years after post, uh, post announcer, post uh, press box. So no, it kind of faded away. Well, anything else outside the room, JT? Yeah, so, well, the ongoing um, jag off, Deshaun Watson, uh, word was 20 of his 24 lawsuits got settled. Um, uh, but <laughs> the ones that remained are still pretty adamant about their case, I believe, it's some of the original ones. Hey, congratulations, Mr. Goodell and the NFL for sweeping this under the rug. And we're going to look forward to Deshaun starting in week eight. Go get him, NFL. Yep, that's what it boiled down to. Sweeping it under the rug. Yeah. The, the only question I have for Watson, why are we settling 20 out of 24 lawsuits, but you're proclaiming you're innocent in every single one of them? Uh, uh, the whole point, yeah. Just shut him well, up. The whole thing is, though, is the probably the reason that, you know, he wasn't able to settle the other four is he's going to need extra money from that two hundred and thirty million guaranteed contract to settle the other four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even going to get into. Broke. I'm not even going to get into it anymore because it'll just take way too much time and it ain't worth it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one more. One more for it. Uh, <laughs> the, the Gronk retires again. Who? I don't know. Some guy they call Gronk. I don't know who that is. New England Kronk? Patriot. Gronk. Rob Gronkowski. You don't know him, T.A.? Never heard of one him. One of the best tight ends to play in the National Football League. You Excuse don't know me? who he is? Excuse me? Who that? What was that that you said he was? One of the best tight ends to play oh. in the NFL. So when you say best, are you like talking top three, top five, top 10, top 20? I would put him top three. Tony Gonzalez is number one. Hey, look, I understand, I understand your generation likes the Mary Jane. I just got to tell you, you got to cut back on it. If you think he's top three in the NFL forever. <laughs> He's had You're, some of the best postseason performances as well. Look at his postseason stats. All right. When the um, chips are down, look at the postseason stats, DA. <laughs> I tell you. 
that's what you want to think. <laughs> All right. That's okay. A lot will. <laughs> Let's put it that way. A lot will. So, including one former coach I just happened to talk to the other day, interestingly enough, um, who also played in the NFL as a tight end for the Steelers, but I won't mention any names. So, uh, uh, yeah, there's a good possibility we might uh, get his input on this player uh, as it becomes official. Now, it's not official yet. Yeah, he's already retired once. Let's let's see if this yeah, one counts. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's. Uh, <laughs> Do we have another Brett Favre on our hands? Hold our horses there. <laughs> no, because Brett uh, stood alone. Gronk has to go ahead and rest he's on. Got to go with Tom. Got to go with Tom. In in all honesty, I'm excited about this because it just means I get to see more Gronk commercials. <laughs> So he's one of your favorite. Buy a pair of those shoes, to you. What's that? <laughs> you gonna buy no, a pair he, of those shoes? No. Oh no 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 no. He, he's not my favorite actor. He's you know, the the USAAA commercial that he's got going on there. That's got to be right up there with one of his dumbest. <laughs> you like those, or do you like the Baker Mayfield Progressive better? I like the Baker Mayfield, man, because I think they did a really good job of how they protect his mm-hmm. home and being that progressive is out of Cleveland. So I think that whole thing kind of, you know, tied in there. You know, I wish they had done more with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, just delivering one boot to Alice Cooper in, in lieu of a weed whacker. I mean, you could have went in a whole lot of different directions. There. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yes, you are. Yeah. Marketing will be my next gig. <laughs> hey, guys, uh, something else while we got a little pause in the action here before we get into uh, um, the Mike Tomlin uh, latest interview that. Um, hey, we're everywhere on social media, including our new um, Facebook group, Steelers Nation number seven, two, four obviously uh, representing the 724 area code here in Western Pennsylvania. Let us know where you're from, 724 is out there. And uh, don't forget to stop out Facebook, uh, Steelers Nation local number 724. Uh, so we had to compete with the 412 area code. So 724 is out there. Jump on. We got a nice group starting. And uh, almost had a guy on tonight, guys, who is uh, an artist, our friend Willie Hobbs who does uh, sports art and uh, just did one on Joe Hayden too. We're looking to do something with it. Hopefully do a, uh, you know, a little um, raffle, little raffle. Yeah. For a little charity auction of an autographed uh, Joe Hayden original. Tell you what, it's a sweet, that's a sweet picture too. Yeah, it is. You guys saw it too. We would put it out there as we get more, uh, more info, and uh, you know, once we connect with Joe to um, see when we can get this, also might work some stuff out with some of the local uh, local drinking establishments in the Latrobe area and feature that throughout the uh, the training camp. Would be a good time. It'd be put it up down there so people can stop in, visit, sign up, put their bids in, etc. So. Pretty cool stuff coming up, guys, as far as that goes. But, um, yeah, swing by Facebook, Steeler Nation, local number 724, and join up and join some great conversation. So we got the Mike Tomlin interview. I didn't get a chance to listen to it, so I'm going to let you guys run with that. Uh, What was said, now this was with Ryan Clark, is that correct? Yes, it was with his show called The Pivot. So it's. Ryan Clark, Fred Taylor, I want to say, and Channing Crowder. And they went to Tomlin's house, had a had a real long discussion with him. And they ran through some things with Mike Tomlin. Um, they brought up the A-B situation. And Tomlin basically said, in no capacity is, is A-B coming back. He certainly isn't putting a helmet on and running out of the tunnel and playing. I do think, however, the way Tomlin talked about him, 
you know, he kind of defended AB without defending AB by basically saying how hard he worked and nothing was out of the possibility for AB on the field. So I think he definitely left the door open for AB to come back, just sign the paperwork and get the back back the hell out of the building. Yeah, so that really has nothing to do with Tomlin as much as it does with art and how art wants to see it perceived. And I think that, you know, seeing and listening to what he had to say, that was more of, I know you guys asked this question. I don't need to go down this road as a football player. Nobody worked harder. We had nine great years. That's all I'm going to say, because as a person, I think if Tomlin really let the chips fly, We'd hear new Tomlinisms that we've never heard before <laughs> describe AB's actions and Only why he's not. Up. Yeah, and why he's not coming back. Yeah, but he did have a lot of nice things to say, and and their relationship was a lot closer than what people think. I mean, AB's kids were staying at Mike Tomlin's house. AB called him on Easter and asked Tomlin what he should do for his son on Easter. And Tomlin said, take him to church and then you're coming over for an Easter egg hunt. So they did have that type of relationship. Yeah, but that was that, before he went off the deep end. Yeah, yeah I'm not okay. saying that this is going to happen tomorrow. After the perfect hit, just saying. I don't, I don't think it, this is going to happen tomorrow. I don't think it's going to happen a year from now, I think four or five years down the road, possibly this could be some sort of an option for the Steelers organization and Antonio Brown to have some sort of closure because ultimately that's what we need. We need some sort of closure with this situation. Sure. Need to move on. Yes. So we'll, we'll have closure, but if you're talking four or five years down the road, that means he's not retiring as a Steeler. He's retiring as a Buccaneer. But what if well, he doesn't take another snap? That's the thing. Just go so, away. So he's essentially later. retired. So, yeah, but he has to officially file that paperwork with the NFL. True. Mm. And, it, and at this point in time, you figure he's got four choices. I can retire as a Steeler, a Buccaneer, a Patriot, or a Raider. And... Out of all four of those teams, I don't think any of them want to be associated with his name as being the guy he got retired from. So it's going to be interesting to see how that does go down when he does announce his retirement. Do you – where do you, where? okay, take the antics away. Where does A.B. rank in the all-time Steelers receivers amongst you guys? Well, I mean, if if we go on stats, because it's a big stat thing, you know, he's number one. But I think there's more to a player than just stats. I mean, there's a there's situation, there's error, there's there's a whole slew of things we can get into that makes a player a great player. But at the end of the day, it's his actions off the field. I mean, we're not talking like we're not talking like Sosa or McGuire, who probably should be in the Hall of Fame for baseball right now. Hell, even Pete Rose for that matter. I mean, those guys weren't forgiven. Not when you look at the football field. This guy's last game, he, he clothed himself and walked off the field on his teammates. <laughs> I mean, Oh, that's that it. It was like, something that just doesn't that doesn't go away. That is that is etched in NFL history forever. I mean, mm -hmm. when when they bring the bust into bring the bust into the Hall of Fame, is he going to be naked? <laughs> no jersey. I don't know. Mr. Yeah. Big Chest officially. Mr. Big Chest. Mr. Big Chest. We've officially exceeded in, in our allotted time for A B discussions. So yeah, yeah. Move us along here. Um, hey, one other thing, guys, don't forget we're all, all over social media, but you can find everything you need right at SteelersRealm.com. 
We are also on YouTube. So for the video version, you're watching it. We'll be on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, also out there on Rumble as well, too. Another source. And you can see our posts on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, and even LinkedIn for you business people out there. I uh, appreciate your follows. And don't forget the uh, Steelers Nation number 724 Facebook group, too. So little plug there, guys. Hey, good to get together with you again. We Each week we're thinking, man, we're going to have enough to talk about tonight. And then each week the Steelers just continue to deliver for us. So thank you much, Steeler Nation, for hanging with us. Appreciate it. A lot of love from my boys out there, Freight Train and TA. Have a great rest of your week, man. The weekend begins soon and uh, looking forward to a nice weekend. Careful in the hot tub, Steeler Nation. Peace out, buddy. We're out of here. Steelers Nation, good night, good evening. Enjoy the weekend. Adios, amigos. <laughs> we'll catch you later, guys. Oh, We're you? Out, 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 out of here. Check back next week into the Steelers realm 